A bite analysis is used to determine the position of the lower jaw in relation to the upper jaw. With regards to its position vis-à-vis -vis the upper jaw, the lower jaw is not positioned in a permanent fashion. Its optimal position is recalculated over and over by the brain based on data supplied by the small receptors in the periodontal apparatus, the musculature, and the jaw joint. Thus, the masticatory apparatus is able to adjust very quickly to the wearing down of the teeth and to tooth loss. In most cases, you only notice the phenomenon of the variable position of the lower jaw upon waking in the morning. Many people sleep with their mouth open at night, and this extended mouth posture erases the optimal position of the lower jaw in the brain. The result is a feeling upon waking in the morning that your teeth don't fit together well. It's only after a few chewing movements that our brain rediscovers the correct jaw position by means of these sensitive receptors. Then we can begin the day comfortably. If the lower jaw is pressed into an unfavorable position, for example due to a bad dental prosthesis, it can cause facial pain, jaw joint pain, and even headaches. In individuals with a full set of teeth, the position of the jaws is determined by the dentition. In persons without any teeth, or with very few teeth, the dental technician needs information about how the jaws relate to one another in order to be able to correctly prepare the dental prosthesis. A bite analysis will demonstrate the jaw relationship to the technician. There are numerous techniques for taking a bite analysis. You see one of them here. First, the patient bites into a cotton roll for 10 minutes so that memory, or our brain, is deprogrammed. Afterwards, the practitioner grabs the patient's lower jaw through a special grip and closes it, thereby pushing the mandibular condyles to the upper front. However, this technique has limited practical applications because it doesn't apply to every patient. It should only be used on patients who, due to severely reduced teeth, don't possess a clear dental arch. For these patients, their lower jaw cannot be positioned in a reproducible fashion. During the bite analysis procedure, a silicone squeezer is placed between the two toothless or sparsely toothed jaws. Based on the impressions of the jaw ridges in the squeezers, the technician can now roughly position the plaster models and prepare what is known as a bite splint. With the aid of the bite splint, a second bite analysis is performed, during which the patient wears the bite splint instead of the squeezer. Thus, the determination of the jaw position is even more accurate. Nowadays, it's assumed that the ideal position of the mandibular condyles in the large joint socket is at the top front. Therefore, one attempts to achieve this position in the lower jaw during the reconstruction of the bite. In the past, and even sometimes today, the lower jaws of many patients with teeth were forced into a target position by means of new dentures and or the cutting of teeth. This makes no sense whatsoever. A bite analysis of patients with a good set of teeth and of those without complaints is unnecessary because the individual's bite results from the dentition of the teeth. Although it may deviate from the ideal bite, this fact actually doesn't matter at all. Thus, a bite analysis only makes sense if there's a lack of reference points. For example, in case of a severely reduced bite or a toothless patient, it's very rare that a new bite is sought in patients with a full set of teeth, like those with facial and or jaw joint disorders. For such purposes, the remaining teeth must be cut to accommodate the new bite situation.